Recently proposed reductions to the National Science Foundation budget threaten to cripple the relatively new fields of gravitational wave astronomy and multi-messenger astronomy. If the proposed budget cuts are adopted, one of the two most sensitive gravitational wave observatories in the world will be shut down, greatly reducing the ability of scientists to observe and locate astronomical processes and events that cannot be observed with conventional light wave based astronomy. Conventional astronomy observes the universe through various forms of electromagnetic radiation, namely starting with radio waves at the low frequency end of the spectrum through infrared radiation, visible light, UV radiation, all the way up to X-rays and gamma rays at the very high frequency end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Conventional astronomy provides detailed images and spectroscopic information about objects, allowing for the study of their composition, temperature, and motion. However, electromagnetic waves are easily scattered or absorbed by interstellar gas and dust, making it difficult to observe very distant or obscured objects. Gravitational wave astronomy observes the universe via the very small ripples in space-time created by accelerating masses. Gravitational waves were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity in the early part of the 20th century. However, they were not actually observed until 2015. Gravitational wave astronomy provides a new way to study the universe especially events involving black holes, neutron stars, and the very early universe, which are difficult or impossible to observe with electromagnetic radiation. Compared to electromagnetic waves, gravitational waves are extremely weak and difficult to detect, requiring incredibly sensitive detectors and sophisticated data analysis. These two types of astronomy provide complementary information about the cosmos. Electromagnetic radiation provides detailed information about the properties of objects, while gravitational waves offer information about the dynamics of massive objects and the overall structure of space-time. In addition, because gravitational waves penetrate through matter, almost unimpeded, they allow us to observe events at much greater distances from the Earth than conventional astronomy. This is equivalent to looking back further in time, since gravitational waves travel at the speed of light just like electromagnetic waves. Multi-messenger astronomy is the coordinated observation and interpretation of multiple signals received from the same astronomical event. Many types of cosmological events involve complex interactions between a variety of astrophysical processes, each of which may independently emit signals of a characteristic messenger type, such as electromagnetic radiation, including radio waves, infrared, visible light, and X-rays, gravitational waves emitted when very massive objects interact, neutrinos emitted from nuclear reactions taking place in the cosmos, and cosmic rays, which actually are very high energy charged particles that are emitted by processes taking place in stars. For example, supernova remnants produce copious amounts of these cosmic rays. When two or more of these messengers are received essentially simultaneously on Earth from a source event in outer space, scientists often can learn much more about what caused the event than they could from a single messenger. Gravitational waves are an important component in multi-messenger astronomy because they originate from events involving very massive objects such as black holes and colliding neutron stars, 
that take place at great distances from the Earth. However, we have only a very small number of facilities that can detect events producing gravitational waves. The currently operating gravitational wave detectors are listed in this chart. The most sensitive gravitational wave detection system is LIGO. The acronym LIGO stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. It consists of two identical laser interferometers, one located in Hanford, Washington, the other in Livingston, Louisiana. Each interferometer has two arms 90 degrees apart, as was shown in the introduction to this video. The length of each arm is four kilometers, a bit less than two and a half miles. Virgo, located near Pisa, Italy, consists of a single interferometer with three kilometer arm lengths. Geo 600, located near Hanover, Germany, consists of a single interferometer with effective arm lengths of 1.2 kilometers. This detection system is used primarily to test proposed improvements in other gravitational wave detection systems. CAGRA, located deep under underground in Japan, is a single interferometer with three kilometer arm lengths. CAGRA is unique in that it is shielded from much of the surface noise that affects above ground interferometers, limiting their sensitivity. In addition, CAGRA employs cryogenically cooled mirrors to further reduce sensitivity, limiting noise. The sensitivity of interferometric gravitational wave detectors for observing distant objects depends on a host of factors, such as the interferometer arm length, noise from thermal fluctuations, laser instability, Evi environmental effects, as well as on the frequency of the gravitational waves generated by the astronomical event that's being observed. Detection sensitivity is measured in parsecs, which is a unit astronomers use. One parsec is equal to the distance a light wave, wave travels in 3.26 years. A megaparsec is a million times that, in distance units that you are more familiar with, a megaparsec is approximately 1.92 times 10 to the 19th miles. That is a really long distance. The key takeaway from this chart is that the two interferometer LIGO system can see gravitational waves originating from events that happen more than twice as far away from the Earth as the other currently operating gravitational wave detectors. So astronomers looking for other messaging signals from these very distant events are dependent on the information from LIGO to know where to look for them in the sky. This chart shows why the proposed cuts to the National Science Foundation budget would cripple the contributions that gravitational wave astronomy can make to multi-messenger astronomy. The figure on the left shows that when a gravitational wave event is detected nearly simultaneously by both LIGO interferometers, then the location of the event is somewhere in a ring covering about 11% of the sky, making it practical for astronomers to look for other messaging signals. On the other hand, if the event is detected by only one of the two LIGO interferometers, then the source could be anywhere in approximately 70% of the sky, in which case it would not be practical to look for other messaging signals. If the proposed 57% cut for the National Science Foundation 2026 budget becomes final, one of the two LIGO interferometers would have to be shut down. If that happens, the location of gravitational wave producing events 
further away from the Earth than about 50 megaparsecs would be too imprecise to allow astronomers to obtain information about those events using other messengers such as electromagnetic signals, severely crippling the new field of multi-messenger astronomy. In addition, there would be substantial reductions in support for the scientists and technicians that work on the LIGO project that likely would impede progress in gravitational astronomy for a very long time. Thanks for watching. I hope you have found this video informative. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments section of the video and I will do my best to respond. In addition, please take some time to watch some of my other videos on scientific topics. Thanks again for watching.